Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how to double your real estate tax deductions on remodels. Many investors have missed out on this tax loophole because of poor planning, but you'll not make this mistake. I guarantee it. Now, if you want to learn more about how to properly structure all of your real estate investments and protect your assets, you can register for our free tax and asset protection live event at the link below. All right, now let's talk about how to double up on your real estate tax deductions this year. Okay, so what am I referring to? First off, this strategy applies to rehabs. So if you've got a, a rental property and you're thinking about doing a rehab on it, pay close attention to this because this deduction you don't want to miss. Now, the second thing about this as well is that you just can't go out and buy a property with the intent to rehab it to take advantage of this. You need to put your property in service. So this strategy is going to apply to you and those investors out there that have already been renting their property. Now, it doesn't mean that you actually have to rent your property out. You just got to try to rent your property out. So when you hear you have to put your property in service, what it means is that you have to be out there holding it out for rent. So if I put my property out for rent for three months and people drove by and they looked at it and they go, the hell I want to live there. Look at that place. It needs to be rehabbed. Hmm. You think so, do you? Okay. Well, then I better start rehabbing this property. Or if some tenants move out, they've trashed the place, or you've been kind of holding off on, on doing a rehab and you want to harden it up, be listening because this strategy is for you. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about a partial asset disposition strategy. Guys, this is phenomenal what it can do for your tax return. So what, it, what I mean by that is let's assume that I have this house and uh, I need to go in and remodel the, the kitchen and that's going to cost me, let's say, $40,000 to do, do this, this remodel on the kitchen. And in order to do the remodel, I know you're probably saying, Clint, no one's going to spend 40 grand on a kitchen remodel, but just, just play with me here on the numbers, all right? It doesn't matter. It all adds up the same. So let's say to pull out the kitchen, rip everything out, it's going to be $12,000. Let's say I also want to replace the roof. The roof's going to cost me 80 k to replace this roof. It's a big house. And in order to, to rip, tear the roof off, it's going to run me $30,000. Okay, so here's where people mess up. It's this right here, pulling out these assets. So what you want to do before you go in and do a rehab, get all of those things added up. Everything that you intend to do, ripping out a bathroom, ripping out a kitchen, ripping off a roof, doing HVAC. If you're going to do a serious rehab, add up everything that you plan to rip out, then go out and perform a cost segregation study on the property. So you're going to do a cost seg before you do any of the rip out. Get that cost seg done. So what are they going to do with the cost seg? They're going to come and they're going to tell you what is the value of all of these components that you're taking out. And so the value of your components is like how much useful life do I have left in the roof? Well, it's going to cost 30000 to remove it, plus the value of that roof as it currently stands is $25,000. All right, now your kitchen and your bathroom, they're going to charge you 12000 to demo it. I know it's a little high, but you understand where I'm going here. Plus the value of what they're demoing in that is what is the value of the kitchen as is or what is the value of that bathroom? Let's say they, they, they tell you it's uh, $15,000. Okay, so here's what you're able to do then. You add up these numbers here, that equals $55,000. You add up the numbers down here, that's going to equal $27,000. So you add those two up. I'm not great at math, but I think that's going to be 82,000 here. You have 82k now in tax deductions that are going to be available to you. All right? So that's the first benefit you get by ripping all that stuff out and you're able to deduct it. The cost of the removal and and the cost or the value of what you've taken out of your house. Now you come in and you put in a new roof for 80,000 and you put in a new kitchen and bath down here for 40,000. So you've invested another $120,000 into this property. Guess what guys? You want to write that off? Come back in and do a second cost segregation study on your property. They're going to come back in and they're going to value your roof. They're going to value the bathroom. They're going to value the kitchen. They're going to say, hey, these items are $120,000. You get a second deduction now. So you, in, in my example here, you're writing off $202,000 by doing it this way. So rather than get a 100% deduction, you receive 80% of this. But tell you what, $160,000, 
Who doesn't want $160,000 write off on their tax returns? The problem is people miss that first leg all the time. I can't tell you how many tax re, uh, investors I've looked at in their tax returns. They've said, yeah, I did a uh, remodel on three properties and I'm looking through there and like, where's your partial asset disposition study? Did you write that off? I didn't know I could. Well, from watching this video, you know you can. So if you want to learn more about this and other strategies as it relates to being a real estate investor, I encourage you to download my free ebook, Ultimate Guide to Real Estate Professional Status. I got a link right below in the show notes. Click on that. It's going to guide you through these strategies and many more.